Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about concepts, programming and juniors. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, I just finished my first year of programming or software engineering education and I'm wondering now that I'm getting ready to take a job, what concepts should I feel comfortable with? This is a great question and it's also a very tricky question because of the thing that I've stated a few times before. Guys, when I say that, or anybody for that matter says that this is something that you need to know and this is something that you need to know, usually there is a range of things that may vary from company to company. In certain companies they value some things and in other companies they value other things. There are usually a few core concepts just in general that usually is true but at the same time, it's not a given. That's why it's so hard to give any type of objective, concrete feedback or tips and so forth when it comes to software development, simply because the person who's giving out the advice has to have a very holistic understanding of pretty much the entire industry and all the different possibilities. And they also have to be emotionally equipped with dealing with the fact that if you state A, it's likely there's a million other people who's gonna say, no, it was B. And you have to be able to deal with that. So what I'm gonna try to give you now is more of a scenario, something where I think that this is going to be more useful than just a list of things, because I'm sure I can list out the obvious things that most juniors are going to need. And that's gonna be, you're gonna need to know HTML, CSS, JavaScript, a server-side language of some sort. You're going to need how to use a database. You're going to need to know some basic usage of data of crypto encryptions because storing passwords with some type of encryption is very important. You're going to have to know some uh, like HTTP, HTTPS, so you know how secure information works on the web. You're going to need to know sessions, how to manage user accounts and things of this nature. JSON in order to be able to transfer communication between an SBA, which brings us to an SBA of some sort. Well, it doesn't have to just be SBA. JSON is of course, course, of course more universal than that. But most people are these days building an SBA of some sort, not all of them, but quite a lot of them. And that also brings us of course to front and related technologies uh, such as NPM and bundling and Webpack and like so forth and so forth. And it just kind of continues from there, guys. There is so, so, so many things like Git version control, stuff of this nature, test-driven development, object-oriented programming, um, domain-driven design, if you want to be, if you want to have a theoretical angle as well. And I suppose that that would be like a rough, I mean, REST APIs, like how to use APIs and I, some type of basic API design is also something that you should have a good understanding of. So the list that I just gave you is hopefully enough or at least feels a tiny bit overwhelming to the, those of you who haven't been doing this for all that long. And hopefully you will also understand that this is like some of the basics. I haven't even, oh, I forgot. Uh, responsive design is also very useful to know. I, sorry, I, I'm gonna try to stop adding things to that list because I can continue. But hopefully that's going to give you a bit of an indicator to how ridiculous the notion is that you will be a professional software developer, even an amateur, like still sort of professional grade amateur within three months. It's not happening, guys. It's not. It is like the, the, the range of tooling that you could in theory need to know in order to survive in this industry is massive. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I want you to know something. And the thing that I want you to know is that depending on where you start your first job, you're going to learn some of these things that I've just mentioned on the job and some things you're going to be expected to know before you start. Now, it's very, very hard for me to say what exactly is going to be expected of you to know upfront and what can be taught, taught at the job. 
I can give you one example and that is that I have worked with some juniors that usually struggle with understanding Git and version control. That is something that most of the companies that I have been working for have been okay with that they are not a master of. It's not that all the things that I just mentioned and even the things that I forgot to mention are a hard requirement and things that you have to be an absolute expert in. But these are the concepts that you are going to face when you work as a developer. This is the stuff that we do every single day. And the mindset that I want to sell you is that in a really good scenario, in, in a perfect world, your first job will be as part of another so of a software team. In other words, you're going to have coworkers who are more senior than you, who can help you, who can train you, and the company is going to be willing to make an investment in you. That doesn't guarantee that you get in, because once again, we come back to this problem that there's two steps to this. The first step is that you need to prove in the company's eye that they, are, they should take a risk on you, because you are a risk when you're unproven. And that's gonna happen at the hiring stage. And how they test you is going to determine if you're gonna come in, get in or not get in. It's a similar sort of thing that you go to school, in many cases, to learn different subjects that you may not use on a daily basis, but you are evaluated based on how well you do in those subjects it's a very similar thing and then when you get in you are expected to have a certain level of skill in certain areas in order to for you to stay put in that company and here is the kicker if you get into a software team you are going to get a lot of these sorts of it's going to be more forgiving if that makes sense it's going to be easier for you to adopt these skills but that is not the only scenario the other scenario is that you get into a software t a software company, or a, it doesn't even have to be a real software company, you get into a company where they want you to be fairly self-reliant. And that's the key thing. This is why this list is so long and why it's so tricky for quite a lot of juniors to get into a, to a certain companies. Because if you are supposed to be self-reliant, if the company needs you to be self-reliant, and usually this is the case, the normal setup, especially for the companies who exploit cheap labor, which is usually you guys or the people who are junior, they, you are cheap and this is why some of the companies hire you. What they usually do is that they will put you on a peripheral, a peripheral project, as I like to call it. It's a project that has a value to the company, but it is not something that they are going to allocate their most senior staff to fixing. And then they're going to give you a supervisor. And that supervisor is likely some person who is either, hopefully they're at least invested in the project, but sometimes that's not the case. The worst case scenario is that you're basically left alone. You get a few, maybe an introduction to the project and then you're expected to deliver and you have no one. You have no, like apart from this supervisor who may or may not be available, you're not going to get a mentor, which is the case in the best case scenario, you're going to get mentors, uh, plural, like several people in a team, which is the perfect setup. This is the thing that you should go for if you can at, a, at, at all, if it's a, at all possible. But quite a lot of you are not going to face that. You're going to be in a situation where you're alone and the only person you have to talk to is your mentor or like, no, not your mentor, your supervisor. And he's not most likely going to be your mentor. And that's why you need to have an understanding of these concept that I've, concepts that I've talked about, because these are the things that is, well, I'm not saying that they're expected of a senior, a senior needs to know even more than this, but it's, the sort, it's a range of things that you would need to know in order to be self-reliant. And that's the key thing here. So what I want you to take away from this is that what you need to achieve in order to know if you are ready or if you're prepared to be a software developer, you need to think about the worst case scenario. And the worst case scenario for you as a software engineer is that you work completely alone, which means that you need to be able to deliver by yourself. You're not expected to be a master, but you're expected to be self-reliant and maybe need some supervision at like at the worst and in the best case scenario you actually get to be in a team and you can collaborate and you can develop and that's a different story but the worst case scenario is this I have been there myself I know exactly how it feels to be completely alone and to have to figure out everything kind of on the fly and teach yourself be your own mentor if you will and this is a reality that quite a lot of you will face so make sure that you have a 
good understanding of the, all the things that make up an application so that you can actually build it in a fairly self-reliant fashion. Have a great day.